Hello and welcome to Racers Now. It's the usual Thursday night slot with SD. Looking forward to the Saturday racing, but also this week, SD fancies a couple at Catterick, where he will be in person on Friday. Catterick up the north of Yorkshire, lovely jubbly. We're in a good position, anti-post from Monday's video. Thanks for watching that, where we look forward to a couple of races from Sandown and one from Musselburgh. We'll cover those as we go, scrolling along at the bottom as well. So, SD, how are you? Oh, I'm very good. I'll tell you what, I was all the better to see you. you before we came on air, you were dressed as a bloody golf caddy. You had yeah. some free hat. You'd look like a complete... I mean, have you paid for that? Yeah, I paid for this, yeah. yeah, I paid for like this, bloody yeah. lunatic. Yeah, yeah, I'm quite good at golf yeah. in, my spare, in my spare time. Um, but you don't quite have any spare the... time because you concentrate on just on racing, don't you? Yes, yes, yes. Well, that's so why we have you on races going now. Going fishing or something. Yeah, or, well, that's why or, we have or you. playing golf, attempting to be good. Honestly, you look like a yeah. complete loser yeah. in that. Exactly, exactly. I mean... It's, there's not. You could say the same about your facial hair that looks incomplete, permanently incomplete. But you know, we can we can all make a make a judgment call, can't we? Yes, we we can we can slap right. hair. Yes. So, anyway, you're, uh, we've got your anti post bets scrolling along the bottom. But first things first, you're telling me there's a good card at Catterick on Friday. Uh, oh, there's a couple wonderful. of bets to be had. So uh, tell me about Catterick Friday then. Off you go. Yes, in, in North Yorkshire. I'm surprised you knew that. Um, we flagged a horse on here a few weeks ago, didn't we? Um, called Halfway House Land, and they flattened this thing at Catterick in a very similar race. Um, and they took it out at the start, and it was 25 the night before. They punted it to seven. They gave it a spin round Newcastle. It jumped round. It was, it was beaten from here to uh, to bloody Wembley, but uh, it had no chance at the weights. And now it's running off its true mark of 72, this halfway house lad, tomorrow. As I said at the time, Morris is no stone jug at all. And off a mark of 72, this progressive five-year-old must have uh, excellent claims here. I, I think they might just try a punt on this thing. Um, look, more clouds will tear off him from Fearless Action, who we have had success with on this channel. The jumping's gone to pot, I'm afraid. Um, Betty Menz isn't in great form, and Treaty Boys in the red. This looks a very winnable contest for a, and I think we might just see a, a good slice of improvement tomorrow. Well, I will be fair to you. You did flag this the other week when it ran at Newcastle, not to back, but to watch because you thought they might be, uh, uh, saving it for another day, shall we say? But yeah, rate of seventy-two, so a really quality, uh, quality hurdle in this class five handicap hurdle. Uh, it's a chase. Class, like, handicap well chase. You, you I do don't wonder. understand, Jay. You did the silly Isles oh. hurdle on Monday. You no, I, I actually, Mister SD, I watched it back, and you said um, it was uh, something else as well. You, you made the same mistake as me, just in reverse here later in the video. I can, I'll go back and, and check that for you. Anyway. A 72 rated uh, uh, handicap chaser. Yeah, Ed Austin's taking five off, so it's oh. it's actually running, of course, off 67. I mean, what a what a horse is it? But but in all seriousness, they did have a they did have a punt and and thought it would be better. Obviously, that doesn't turn the record because it didn't run. Yeah. Um, and I just think it isn't. It is a very very winnable race. And if I know Morris, he'll be. Uh, He'll be getting his millions together and putting them on. Of course, Grand National winning jockey, um, Morris Barnes, great, great trainer, great trainer. Tony it's Dobbins. Thing, it's the type of thing that doesn't show in the form book, SD, that, but you, that you provide to us in terms of, like you say, 25 to 1 the night before, coming to 7 or 8, got withdrawn close to the off, etc. Yes. Et so the money was was down on yes. that day. Um, they got it and waxed, Morris, Morris rode Rubistic in 1979 to win the national. Oh, amazing! Really Great like man, lovely, lovely family. The Barnes. Right, so They're the racing, at, the racing at Catterick got sorted. The, the racing at Catterick on Friday doesn't get that much better because you are maintaining your class five loving in the lucky last at Catterick 410. Tell me about. Yeah, it. I'll just flag up another couple before we go to the 410 because I think okay. it's only fair. Uh, there's a horse called Rolling River who runs first time over fences at 135. Wouldn't be surprised to see quite a bit better from him. Molly Signy, of course, had a winner today at Foss Lass. Um, that was his first winner for a few months. 
Um, off a mark of 79, he'd be, he'd be capable of winning this, but uh, I was just looks a bit desperate bit... to me, uh, SD. Um, yeah, I was got... hoping for a bit bigger than 13 to 2. How's rolling, that? rolling river pulled up on his last two attempts. Um, yes. yeah, um, yeah, interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh... He's only he's only 13 to 2, and he's 5 to 1 in most places, so um. Okay. Interesting. I was hoping for something like twenties, and I'd have put him up as a bet. Uh, just another note as well. It's it, there's, a, there's a hurdle at uh, two or five, the juvenile hurdle. Um, Gavin Sheehan, of course, the great Gavin Sheehan, is oh. going to Catrick for one ride tomorrow. Um, yeah. It's not like he's on his way up to Musselburgh either. He's at Sandown on um, on Saturday, so that's interesting. That's Golden Maverick, but at two to one, you know, it's not very sporting to put something like that up, uh, especially when it's never jumped a hurdle in public. Um, so we then go on to the lucky last, the uh, Racing TV profits return to racing handicap hurdle. Well, that's very interesting, Racing TV, because uh, I don't know if you've clocked it, viewers, but they've put it up a fiver. If you pay, if you pay Racing TV. They yeah. put it up a fiver this week. Um, that's a 20% increase. And I get costs are increasing. But if you want to join Racing TV, if you join them on eBall Week, it's always a tenner. So just ring them on eBall Week. Don't pay 30 quid a month to, to, to subsidise people. I mean, I do like Lydia, but they've got some other feral presenters, haven't <laughs> they? Um, <laughs> So, for any racing fans out there that's you know, listening to SD, you've got to wait until August until you start watching live. Well, they races. do something so at Cheltenham. You know, Peter, Peter Norton, you're subsidising Peter Norton's optician fund. And he, he, that guy does need glasses the amount of losers he tips. Um, anyway. 410 Catterick. 410 Catterick. Racing TV profits return to racing handicap hurdle. We've got an odds on shot here in Let the Dust Settle. Noticeably weak in the betting, but did win quite well when I was at Catterick um, eight days ago now. Really didn't meet, really didn't beat much, but but won, won fairly well. Um, the lad who's pretty good is taking seven off camera miles, so you might say, why on earth are you opposing this? But I, I, the eye is drawn to the Richard Hobson horse. Richard is two from four in the last um, two weeks. Um, and the other one, of course, was Fugitive. I couldn't name you the other horse, but um, ran really quite well at Hereford on his latest start, um, over two, three and a half, looking for all the world that he didn't stay that trip, was 50 to one that day and ploughed through the last, has only beaten 18 lengths. And under off a mark of 83 you'd be reasonably confident that will improve for this step back in trip. Richard Richard is a very shrewd operator, and I, I thought quotes of, of circa 11 to 1 were perfectly acceptable in a race like this to upset the favourite. Bel Nabam won, of course, last time um, on New Year's Day, which was, I believe it's four days, four, week, four weeks, four days ago. Um had a very good ride that day from Emma Smith Chaston. Emma's come on leaps and bounds with her riding. Um, would have to benefit from another very good ride against potentially two well handicapped horses here. But I'm more than happy to take the chance on Blue Ver at eleven to one. Right, couple of bets at chunky prices on Friday for SD twenty two to one halfway house lad in the two thirty five and eleven to one Blue Blue Ver day in the four ten. Uh, Blue Ver. Before SD goes on to Saturday... Maybe Hump can tell us. Hump watches this. Our French racing uh, correspondents. uh, Put it in at the bottom, Hump, how it it should be pronounced phonetically. French and Irish. Uh, Talking of Irish... um, Oui, oui. Saturday, um, the Dublin Racing Festival is where the quality comes from this weekend, although SD will probably disagree because he's at Musselburgh. But as usual, the most anticipated, eagerly anticipated clash of the meeting uh, is off. Marie Nationale, the supreme winner from last year, was meant to be taking on Gaelic Warrior. Uh, that's not going to happen because Gaelic Warrior is going for another race over two and a half miles instead of the Irish Oracle. So that leaves Marie Nationale as long odds on. Galopin de Champs is four to nine. He's only got to beat three runners in the Irish Gold Cup. You've got to say that is disappointing, uh, certainly the size of the field. Well, you wouldn't. I mean, you'd I would. be in a little bit. 
I You've would. Been a little bit um, unfair. I'd be, I'd be unfair on any forerunner race that takes place in England or Ireland. In, in either you've, come, you've come out with, with two incorrect statements. The first one being the most eagerly anticipated clash. The most eagerly anticipated clash, you would argue, would be Gallop and Deschamps against Fast or Slow. And it, it, it's a good race, you know. The last, tw the, you the know, last the last twice, twice Fast or, slow, fast beaten, or yeah. slow has has run against Gallop and Deschamps. Yep. He's beaten him. Yep. So this this is no penalty kick at all. Yep. For Gallop in Deschamps. No, I'm not saying it was, but Gaelic Warrior and Marine National was uh, anticipated because it's not something that we're that we're very terribly used to seeing. Um, it was if they were to face each other, then then it would be um, it would have actually been a more difficult race for Marine National to win than would be the actual Cheltenham uh, Oracle in five weeks' time. And well, that, this is on the back of this is on the back of SD. We have missed out on uh, John Bond versus El Fabiolo a couple of weeks ago. Maybe for circumstances out of their control, we've missing out not not necessarily a clash or a duel, but we've missed out on Constitution Hill not running because Nicky Anderson makes it up as it goes along. So 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 far in 2024, I, I, I think... we've had an ongoing theme of big horses yeah, and big clashes I... not materialising. I have to say, uh, we had a debate about this on Monday as well. And, of course, it would be great to see Lossy Mouth run at the festival against um, State yeah. Map and Ch Constitution Hill. But, you know, Donald Trump's taken the easy option, hasn't he? Yeah. So, But, no, that was fair to mention Fast or Slow has beaten Gallopin the last twice uh, they have met. Uh, Gallopin has since uh, been back pretty much to his best when Fast or Slow wasn't in opposition in what's now called the Savile's Chase over Christmas, form of which last week was boosted by... Uh... Remember what it used to be called? Yes, the Lexus. Do you remember what it was called before that? No. The Ericsson? No, I definitely didn't know that. Do you remember the uh, Ericsson? They used to sponsor yeah. that. Well, form, that Savile's Chase form has been um, boosted by the third that was uh, that won at um, Cheltenham last week. What was that, JP, JP or uh, beginning yeah, with C? Capadana, yeah. Capadana, yeah. there you go then. Uh, another one to look out for on Saturday at Leopardstown, the 150 uh, Grade 1 Spring Juvenile Hurdle. S 11 runners, six of them trained by Willie Mullins. Uh, he's got the five, six to four, five Storm Heart, but he also has a horse called Madgeborough making his Irish debut in a Grade 1. So that's second favourite in there. That must be something to uh, to possibly take note of. Um, one of these French imports, he's ran at Autoy, won at Autoy. And now makes his, his debut for Willie Mullins in a grade one. So that's always uh, always interesting. But yeah, no bets for me uh, over in Ireland. Um, SD's concentrating on Musselburgh on Saturday. Just a six, just a six for Willie in that race. I mean, it's just simple. Yeah, well, if, if, he, if they wasn't running, then there would only be... If he was only to run one, for example, then uh, there yeah. would only be six yeah. runners in total. So, yeah. um, so it, can't, it can't all be bad, can it? It can't all be bad. Of course it can. Right, OK. Um where do you want to start on Saturday, SD? Because there's your anti-post bets. Um, yeah, I think it's. I think it's just. We'll just quickly scat over um, Sandown because I couldn't find a bet. Of course, Sandown used to have well, this, the the three mile chase actually. I'm going slightly reverse order. Three forty five used to be won by Desi. The it was known as the Gainsborough Chase, then the Agfa. And now it's the uh, the Virgin Bet Masters. Good luck, anyone getting a bet on with Virgin Bet. I managed to register for an account, and they just blacklisted me straight away. A bit like well, Chelsea City Racecourse. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I couldn't I couldn't find a bet in the race. If I was if I was gonna have a bet, maybe about bangers and cash, but I'm not. Um, just going back to the to the other races again, very hard to get an angle on the one twenty five. I would say Classic Anthem rather jibbed it last time at Plumpton. Um, the the two o'clock again, it's very hard to have a bet in. Harper's Brook's running in it now. Harper's Brook has pulled itself up twice in front. It's more than enough ability to win the race, but it's clearly a um, a bit of a dodge spot. Sandown isn't. I don't think Sandown. Did it at Sandown? Did it at well, Sandown he's done it at Sandown. Yeah, yeah. maybe the. I'm surprised they've run it again here. Um, to the scene of the crime. I wasn't majorly into that, and the silly odds. Of course, we got the value. 
You did? We, I virtually said that we. I wasn't expecting Corbett's Cross to be running in this. I think the intention is is to go for the uh, for the national hunt chase at Cheltenham, and that would be a crap trial. Um, and I think Hermes Allen. We we outlined. You know, we ran very good time at Kempton in second um, on Boxing Day. And I think he's he's probably a class above these, and I I, I expect I expect Hermes Allen to win. And we're on what are we on? At eleven to four, five to two, eleven to four, something. We're like on that. At eleven to four now, six to four best. I said that um, Corbett's Cross would be uh, running. I was wrong. You were right. I think Corbett's Cross might actually run at Fairy House early next week. I believe uh, en route to that national hunt chase, as you mentioned. And Hermes Allen, while we're at it, um, since we spoke on Monday, I think has been ruled out of the Cheltenham Festival. And as Mr. Nichols regularly does, we'll be going straight to Aintree, I believe. Hermes Allen was about 10 or 12 to 1 for the Turners. Turner, yeah, I, I get mixed up what these races JLT, are. the old JLT. But it's an alliance and things like that. Um, 310 at Sandown? 310, yeah, I'm very happy with our position in the race on Good Luck Charm. If you, if you missed it on Monday, um, he... He ran in a very good Lanzarote. He ran in a very good mares race at sorry, she ran in a very good mares race um, at Cheltenham, and she just seems to be very much in form. And I'm predicting that she will relish coming back to three miles. And I don't know if somebody must have tipped her up. She was 16s earlier, and I was going to tell you to go in again. She's now 12 best. Um, I think she may well start shorter than that. I think yeah. she's a very good chance. Um, and up at Musselburgh, where you will be, SD, uh, you put in this county handicap hurdle at 250, the Scottish county handicap. The Scottish county hurdle. Yeah, we were... Uh, yeah, we're in a good position there. I I said to you, I, I couldn't understand why Collingham was 40 to 1. Um, now 16, the lads last taking off last year's winner, coming down the weights, you know, as good a chance as, well, not as good a chance as anything in the race, but I I, I, I wouldn't want to be late in 16. I think he's probably a 12 to 1 short. Um, Sexton's half interesting if he was fit. Um, if you want one of the, towards the top of the market, maybe Park Annan's side, but... I'm perfectly happy with the position in the race where we where we are with that. So the one race you are playing on Saturday uh, that you haven't already played anti post is the two fifteen Edinburgh National, and I wouldn't have expected anything other than you to play in the Edinburgh National this weekend, Esti. Yeah, I remember back in really upset. I remember looking well in this race, and it ran through the wing of the final fence. I was on about sixteens. And I was at Musselburgh and there was all sorts of expletives coming out. Anyway, Ryan Day was on that day. Good good jockey, Ryan Day. Getting married to uh, Molly Dingwall, of course, in, in May. Good luck to them both. Um, I was surprised Castle Robin was such a big prize here at 16 to 1. And um, Musselburgh is a track that favours um, front runners. And certainly... He actually won the Masters at Sandown last year on this day, um, where, he, where he won it from the front. And any sort of reproduction of that effort of just a pound higher, I think, I think would um, would 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 make me interested. Forget his run last time. They took they took all the fences out at Doncaster. I mean, it was a it was a virtual flat race. Um, and this is just his second run, in effect, of, you know, of the year. Um, Fitri Hay owns him. Who do you believe Fitri Hay owns this thing? So, um, I was just surprised he was sixteen. I thought I thought there were enough plus points, and there were several of those above him in the market who I would worry about. I'd be wouldn't worry about. I I would probably fear Universal Folly most, who of course is a Hexham winner, but. Uh, did run a very, very good race at uh, at Aintree behind Giovinco, who gives stay away, was it stay away fair race? Um, and I think would have gone very, very close um, to beating Giovinco, but they missed the fences out at Aintree that day. So, um, on that, he's been, he was, he was running on like a train. They put him back in trip at Carlisle last time. 
um, and predictably he was outpaced, but he, you know, he, he finished like a like a train again. And well, I mean, a train when they're not on strike, of course he is. Um, and I, 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 I'd. I'd favor Universal Folly to uh, those at the top of the market. Just to quickly run through Musselboro, uh, Mon Miral, you would think would win the first, but he's a, he's a class above them, but he's got a mind of his own. So I'm happy to leave that. Um, we've done the Scottish County. Just a, just a word on the Scottish stayers. Good race, that, between Farnog and Florida Dreams. Florida Dreams going up a, a mile in trip. Was due to run at Newcastle early in the week, so but but it pissed down overnight. Farnog has has some reasonable form. It's it's a tricky race. It's a very tricky race, and I couldn't split them two to one each of two. And then there's a couple of of competitive handicaps to finish, uh, but all pretty good at Musselburgh. Uh, let's just touch on uh, that's a very unfortunate term as well. Let's just touch on Milton Harris. Um, from yesterday it it i think some of the stuff he was coming out with you know it 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 was it was absolutely disgusting and if anybody at the bha gives him a uh, gives him a license again i think they probably need their head testing i mean he was he was talking to a girl who was between, between the ages of 14 and 16 and privately whatsapp messaging her and he challenged trainer simon earl who used to ride dextra dove you might remember um, to a boxing match under Queensbury rules. Maybe we should try that. You what, want a boxing you? match under, under Queensbury rules, yes. Well, I've, <laughs> I've, I've seen your cardiovascular abilities, SD, when you had a race around the car park at the office and you literally were close to death. So, um, yeah, I'd be I'd be about 1 to, yeah. one to 25, I think, in, in maybe yeah. that one. Um, but there's many things that you're better at than me. Um, we'll be returning on Monday, will we, SD? Looking forward to the Betfair Hurdle Day at Newbury, is that You right? mean the Schweppes? Is that what it's called? I don't know what it's called. This will be a bit of a stone of Betfair now. Don't confuse it? me. The... Don't confuse me. It's the it was Betfair always known as the Schweppes. Right. Then it and was the, the, Dem trophy, the, the, yeah, the yeah. richest yeah. handicap hurdle in Europe. Won well, by, I remember, Maker Stan winning it. Went on to win a champion yeah. hurdle. Rooster Boosters running it. We're, get, we're getting history lessons left, yeah. right and centre, as yeah. always. I mean, the bingo card tonight. He's done well on the bingo card. He's mentioned Hexham. They don't race again till May. He's mentioned Hexham. No, they race again in March. Well, Four yeah. Uh, <laughs> what was the three-year-old hurdle? What's it? The three-year-old hurdle? No, it's, it's the BK Racing four-mile handicap chase, I think. <laughs> On Derby Day, of course, it's it's the most important three-year-old race of the day. Handicap, uh, juvenile hurdle. Great race, great race. Always the place to go on Derby Day, we Hexham. Rename this channel Hexham now, I think, maybe. Uh, uh, yes. Right. Anyway, yes. well, you've had 22 and a half minutes worth of comedy there from races now on this Thursday night. Two selections for Catterick Friday. One selection at Musselburgh Saturday and the anti-post bets that are still going. And uh, they'll all be in the description, as usual. SD and don't off. forget, don't forget, if you have a bet, if you have a bet on Saturday at Weatherby, uh, five pound or more, you'll get a Mick Walsh pen. Just say races now to wonderful Henry. What more do you want? See you later. Good evening.